Hi, I'm Shelly Carney. Whoa. Hey, Shelly's here. Shelly's in the Yay. house. Today, Ooh. we're going to talk about content creator collaboration for audience growth. The fastest way to grow your audience is to be really scarcity mindset and never share with anyone. No, what? actually, that's wrong. <laughs> The fastest way to grow your audience is to join forces through collaboration with other creators. It means sharing, and sometimes it means sharing with people who are in adjacent or maybe who even do the same thing as you. And there are many ways to do that. And there are a lot of imaginative people out there to collaborate with, um, like us. That's and, right. you know, but it's all about how do you get started? You know, who can you collaborate with? What's the best way to reach out and work with new people? It comes down to relationship building and networking with other people, coaches, creators, speakers. Well, that's exactly what we're going to talk about in this episode. We'll share how beginners get started with cross promotion and other simple one-time collaboration efforts, and then take you all the way through to joint ventures and affiliate marketing. How are you doing today, Shelly? I'm, I'm super. I'm having a good week. Uh, Toby and I, yesterday, we drove to Elephant Butte. Uh, you see... Toby and I have been, of course, I talked about this last week, so you can continue in the saga with us. Uh, Toby and I have been kind of reanalyzing what do we want to do with our news and views content? Um, are people happy with it? You know, how can we grow that audience? And so we did a focus group Tuesday night, and we had a couple of people email us and send us voicemail messages to tell us what's going on, what do they want to see more of, what do they like? What would they like us to add in to our show? And what we heard was, and now keep in mind, this is the same people that have been with <laughs> us since we were doing treasure hunting. They, what they, they liked, want treasure hunting. Well, they do a little bit, but what they liked the most was the outdoorsiness, how Toby and I going outdoors in New Mexico, showing everybody what New Mexico looks like, what's going on in New Mexico. So, um, we decided to go ahead and start doing more of that because it's fun for us too, to get out and make gives us a push to get out in nature and, and do our video skills. Right. So yesterday we drove down to elephant butte Lake park, which is about two and a half hours South of here. <laughs> uh, yeah. So you take I 25 about two and a half hours and, and you're there and it's a, it's a beautiful park. Uh, it's very nice for boaters and water sports people the unfortunate thing is the water has gone down to levels to where it was when the lake was first created when they put wow. the dam up. And so it's very low. And we um, we did some drone footage. We, we did uh, the, uh, you know, on the gimbal uh, footage. And we uh, we did an interview with somebody who was working wow. there and, and got his opinion. He's been there 20 years and he got to talk about what, you know, how he uses the lake, how he works with people, what's going on in the town, uh, you know, because of the economy, because of all of the reduction in use of the lake. So it yeah. was really fascinating. And we're like, That's wow, this is like journalism. Really good. You're exactly. a journalist. You're right? going back to being journalists. That's, That's very right. exciting. Yeah. So we were excited about it. We shared that last night. We hadn't, didn't have, we got back at six o'clock and we had to do a seven o'clock show. So we didn't have time <laughs> to edit because we don't have a team of editors, right? So we just yes. showed clips. We don't have a team of editors yet. <laughs> so we just showed clips and said, here's what's going on. And here's who we talked to. We showed the little interview we did with the man. And it was, you know, I think it was really good. Oh, so, that's awesome. And see how it goes. drone footage and gimbal. I mean, those are things that so I have a gimbal, but it 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 is not as easy as it looks. I that's will just true. say that. And so yeah, I would like to learn more about how to do that stuff too. That's fascinating yeah. to me. But I and I love New Mexico. I am very concerned with the climate emergency that we're having. <laughs> how, you know, if it's a viable place to live anymore. I've mm -hmm. been kind of mm -hmm. fascinated with that because I really love Taos. And yeah. other parts, truth or consequences, New Mexico. I love yeah. that. that that's uh, not I, far from Elephant Butte. Oh, yeah. really? Oh, mm -hmm. wow. That's so cool. Yeah. So I'm like really in into all of that. Um, you know, when I lived in Arizona for five years, I always mm -hmm. preferred the more rural areas. I preferred New Mexico. I preferred going up to Flagstaff and different parts. So uh, it's really, that's cool. I think that's the right track. I love that you ask people. Yeah. We should ask, hey. Hey, everybody, what would you like from Speaking the Little Cocker Business Show? That's right. We want to know. We should ask people. We want to know. We love we have having... all this knowledge, but we don't yeah. know which pieces of it 
interest you guys. Exactly. That's right. Um, so in terms of me, so there's like all kinds of stuff, you know, um, I would say that even if you're, you are in marketing, launching something new and doing something new is stressful. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and I have been read it revving. Like I was, I've been sharing with like friends. I've been, I feel like I've been at like full throttle for a long time to the point where it got kind of stuck there, you know, and I've had like migraines and all kinds of stuff because of mm. just launching things and mm. sending out emails and having emails that aren't so much like, hey, here's how you do something or here's how to be helpful. When you teach a lot, like I have been, and I get a lot of clients from speaking engagements where I'm teaching, I don't do a lot of like sales emails. Um, it can be really stressful. And I think yeah, I've been trying to decide whether or not to share that on here, but I think it's really important for people to realize it's hard for everybody. Yeah. But it, the more you do it, the more you incorporate it into your message, the easier it gets. The easier it gets. Yeah. And I would say that even, you know, today, I know that I'm going to do some more and it, and I feel okay with it, but it has taken like kind of, um, I guess like ripping off the band aid again on that because mm -hmm. I haven't, I haven't had to do it. You know, women yeah. conquer business is at a point now where it, it does its thing <laughs> and I get clients and that works, you know, and I'm busy and, and everything, but to grow a membership, it's a different product. Mm -hmm. um, it's a different animal. And so I realized that my little, sales muscle was <laughs> had weakened since the pandemic because my business shifted so much. Mm -hmm. So I've had all of that going on. And then, but, you know, one of the big courses that we released, uh, and it was actually before we became a membership site, it, we kind of shifted gears because we realized at Epiphany Courses, we didn't want to be doing launch after launch after launch and constantly be selling individual courses. Mm -hmm. I released something called find the right marketing tools for your small business. And it's like a three steps formula that really goes into like how to investigate, talk to software providers and come together, come up with what are basically, what is it that you need? And then if you still need to hire somebody to come and help you pick the right thing, it, it will be there for you. So I re we released that originally as a standalone course. And in the process of doing that, I also made it into an audiobook. And it has taken, <laughs> I think I did that back in February and March. And it has finally released on Audible. It apparently released two days ago, and I didn't know about it. But, you know, talk about being a dork. I go on Audible and I search for my own name. <laughs> and then today I found it and I was like, Holy cow, awesome. I'm on Audible. So uh, if you are interested in that, it's one credit on Audible. It's called Find the Right Marketing Tools for Your Small Business. And it includes uh, a few links to the resources that will help you. It's not as robust as if you were to join our membership, but it is a good way to kind of learn more about the philosophy, how we teach at Epiphany Courses, how all of that how all of that works. So it's very exciting. And uh, yeah, just do a search for Jen McFarland on Audible. Guess what? You'll also find the Women Conquer Business show there because it's already, it's also on there. Uh, yeah. So that's kind of exciting. And uh, other than that, we have a massive heat wave. So if you are watching the news and hearing about the Pacific Northwest heat wave, we are in that. I am... I, I am I am fine with heat. I lived in Arizona. So and I'm not gonna complain. Like my complaining is all about the raining. <laughs> so I'm not gonna complain about it being too sunny. Uh, I am grateful that we had all of the rain because it makes it easier to navigate. We have a lot of trees. We do end up with a lot of forest fires. Hopefully it rained enough that things will be okay. Um, but aside from that, um, you know, I just want safety for people who don't have air conditioning because we, I, I don't know how we lucked into it, but we got a house that has AC, which is a rare thing up here. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, that's been pretty nice. And uh, also in my life, my two dogs have been obnoxious all morning long. So I booted them out well before the podcast because I didn't want to deal with that noise. <laughs> 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 
So that's me. Hi. I'm just telling you all of the things. That's good. Uh, what that's what good do you know. have on the um, breaking news side? Breaking news. Breaking we news. Have... <sighs> well, <laughs> since Jen brought up last week about people, uh, Gen Z people looking at TikTok and Instagram for, in for information uh, for where to eat and uh, that sort of thing, I found this. A Veracast survey found 34% of Gen Z turn to TikTok for financial advice, while 33% get money tips from YouTube. So what does that tell us? Well, if you are a money person, a financial guide of some sort, in any capacity whatsoever, make sure you're sharing that information on TikTok and YouTube because you're going to be able to expand your brand in that way. Yeah, you know, I'm I'm really beginning to turn the tide on my views on TikTok. I'll be really interested to see what the what the updated statistics are on TikTok when they're released. I always go by the Pew Research Center. They go through, they have it's a longitudinal study at this point since the beginning of social media. Last year it really looked like it was all younger mostly um overseas people mm -hmm. and now this year it's like if you have a local business people are searching local for tiktok uh, i read this morning that tiktok is going after spotify and amazon and releasing they filed a, a trademark i believe for tiktok music you know it, mm -hmm. i mean it's 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 growing people are using it for search people are also using reddit for search which i find absolutely fascinating and i was like really and then last week i was like oh this is why so we have a lot of people who live on the streets here in portland we have a lot of homelessness house houseless individuals who live on the streets and there was a large encampment by a local business and they had a huge fire i mean this is like a, a big business hopworks brewery it's on a major street owned run by the state called pal not too far from my house and there was a huge fire, not covered by the news, but I could find the fire. I found it first on Twitter. And then I was like, where is this coming from? And it came from Reddit. Hmm. And then it was never covered by the by the news. So hmm. in terms of where you find information, it is starting to change. And so when you if you can get beyond the whole well, why would somebody look for a local business on TikTok or why would somebody get their news somewhere else? If you can get beyond that mental shift, you will find that there's a lot going on out there in other places like Reddit never used to be a place where you could reliably go for anything, you know, um, other than just mean people being mean, mean to each people. other. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I mean, we were before the show, we were going through my checklist for how I promoted the podcast. And there was an item on there that said promoted on Reddit, you know, and I was looking at that and thinking, gosh, you know, why did I stop doing that? And it was because it was kind of like it just felt like kind of a dumpster fire over there. Yeah. And I mean, when Toby and I started you know? our, a gypsy's kiss in 2017, we tried that. We went to Reddit. We went on the Forest Finn uh, treasure reddits and they yeah. were like get out of here you don't know anything written here everyone's like okay right. we're done here <laughs> yeah so so there's a shift happening but you have to find those little corners of the internet so understand that things are happening uh with tiktok things are happening in with reddit all these places the other let's see what's the other breaking news that i read oh yeah social shopping before we get to the of course google messing around with cookies some more uh when we first relaunched this podcast we talked about uh, social shopping so this is a little bit different than social selling social selling is when you share a lot on social and instead of you don't just slide right into the dms <laughs> but there is a methodology for how you use social media to eventually sell your product unfortunately a lot of people do that with just the here's my stuff you know which is like you know, jamming a business card down somebody's throat if you were in person. There's actually a methodology for how you can really teach people about your product and then ultimately do some social, there social is. selling. There, there we is. Need, we, there's a manual uh, for this. We need this separate, manual. <laughs> that's a separate podcast episode. But when we started the show, if you remember, I was talking about how Pinterest and TikTok and all these platforms were kind of going to like what I called a, a QVC social shopping thing where you could like you know sell products and things mm -hmm. like that well that never took off 
and I don't know if it's because people like me are like, it's like QVC, you know, like um, it's taking off in other parts of the world. But if your customers are primarily in, you know, America, it's just mm -hmm. not really taken off. Um, a lot of the platforms are kind of pulling back from that, which is interesting. So that's one of the reasons why you always want to have your own platform. I have a theory on that. What's that? Well, I think that that people are like, if I wanted to go shopping, I would go to Amazon, uh, YouTube, or whoever, wherever they're at. Exactly. Uh, Twitter, whatever. If I wanted this shop, I would go to Amazon and I would go buy something. I don't want to be sold something. I want to want to, well, to buy it. And that's what I mean about social, so, don't social know why selling. I struggle with some of these alliterations, but <laughs> social selling and social shopping. When I teach people about marketing, especially people who are just getting started, it is fundamentally that social media isn't a transactional channel. And I think that's exactly yeah. what you said. People don't go there to just buy stuff. Yeah. So what we're seeing is that at least in the States, that's playing out. And it's not really surprising for people like me. I was intrigued by it. And I said, oh, well, this is interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, so so it is definitely something to watch. We'll see if it comes back. I don't know. But right now, that's kind of on the back burner. The idea that you can go on these platforms. They have you know ways for creators to go on and share you know, I mean, I think at the beginning it was kind of like you can share your recipes on Pinterest and sell them by showing people the wonderful dishes you can make or, or things like that. Um, that's not working out for people. Hmm. So um, if that's part of your strategy, just understand it may be going away from certain platforms. And I think it's for the exact reason that you said. If you have yeah. something you can sell on Amazon, people go to Amazon to buy it. Yeah. Things like but that. You do want people to be aware of you. So it's good to have a presence there just for people to be able yeah. to find you. That's the most important part. Yeah. Just understand people still, it's just the shopping aspect is still just not there mm -hmm. for social. It is in other countries. So if you're selling, I think, in Europe and, and some other parts of the world, then it's something to look at. But it's being pulled back in the U.S. markets. So the big, the big Shelly's like, this is all kinds of stuff that was not in the show flow. So now to get to the point. <laughs> that yeah, Jen is reading my mind. <laughs> <laughs> so um, when I saw TikTok, I was like, yeah, I might as well. I, I had emailed myself all kinds of marketing stories this morning. And so these are all the stories that I emailed myself. Um, but so the big story that I wanted to share on here this week is that Google, of course, this is not surprising. They are pushing back the deadline for killing off cookies until at least 2024. So what cookies are, they are little pieces of code that are little packets that are downloaded when you go to a certain website, unless you have ad blockers. And then if you later see an ad, so say you go to buy slippers, you don't buy slippers, or sometimes if you do, then you go to another website and you see pictures of those same slippers everywhere. So that's like retargeting, right? Mm -hmm. And that happens because there was a little piece of code from that slipper website that was downloaded to your computer. And then if they are running ads, they're showing you those ads in other places that run ads. So like news sites, um, sometimes they show up on blogs. Sometimes they show up on Facebook, YouTube you know, all videos, places, YouTube videos. If you see things again and again, you're like, how did they know? Well, it's because of cookies. So basically, in a nutshell, this is all Jen's thinking. Um, and I think a lot of marketers thinking is that Google never came up with anything to replace cookies with that people are willing to live with. Every time they introduce something like affinity groups and different things, you know, marketers are like, you're never going to be able to do it. Privacy organizations are like, this isn't any better than cookies. You know, and Apple's doing all kinds of things around privacy that are basically killing off Facebook ads. So it's making it very difficult. There's just so many things going on. The environment is really up in the air. So it's really not a surprise. But if you are using things like Facebook pixels and Pinterest pixels and LinkedIn pixels, like you can still use all of that on your website. It can still do the tracking. Um, all of that is still going to work until at least 2024 or until Google figures out what to do. Just understand that more and more people are using things like the Brave browser. They're using ad blockers. <laughs> so many things that if you have all of those tracking things on there, 
it's becoming less and less effective. So there's kind of a lot swirling around ads and it is making it very difficult for Google to figure out how they can become, can remain a multi kabillion dollar <laughs> ad tech company. And it's okay. Kabillion's not a thing, but billions, <laughs> billions and billions every quarter is what they make from ad tech, how they can remain the top of that. And at the same time, uh, you know, understand that technology is changing and people are really pushing back on being tracked so much. Yes. So we'll see what happens. Yes. <laughs> I know that on my website, I just, I, on Women Conquer Business, I just was like, I'm I'm done with all that. So mm -hmm. I don't have Google Analytics. I don't mm -hmm. have any pixels on my website. I did everything I could to create a very privacy focused website at women conquer yeah. business and it's it's been great so it means mm -hmm. then that like everybody can see all the content if you have like ad blockers and stuff you can go there and and nothing is prevented um on other websites you might not be able to see everything um or you go to news sites they want you to have everything turned on and it's so they can they make money from ads and yeah. so it's a it's a much different thing yeah well i i'd add that you know, you and I both do curate on Missing Letter. And if some, and if I get suggested something, I go look at it first. And if oh, yeah. it's a blog post with a whole bunch of ads all over it. Huge turn no, off. I'm not sharing I don't that. do that. I'm mm -hmm. not sharing that. Um, and I'm, I don't share <clears throat> things in my newsletters that I send out if it's going to go to somewhere where there's a bunch of ads. So, yeah. you know, your own, your, if you're in business for yourself, you don't want to do that. Don't put ads on your stuff. Uh, if you can avoid it. I mean, I yeah. know that bloggers, it, it's just not as I, I wrote about that in my newsletter. You know, if you want to build an affiliate marketing business based on mm -hmm. all of those ads, all of those ads and all of those, you know, click this link and I'm going to make a little money. That's uh, Google starting to penalize you, even though they make a lot of money for, for it. Uh, so it, it may it might be a ranking factor issue, but it's also the it's a real it's becoming a turnoff for people. And then as a business owner of an affiliate business, like there are all these people who create like niche websites. You know, it's like I'm gonna talk about marshmallows and that's the only thing I'm gonna talk about. And then they send out affiliate links to all the, the different elements, you know. I don't know why I picked marshmallows. It's a pretty bad example actually, but <laughs> you get my point. So, <laughs> you know, um and you know, and, and so that just isn't working anymore. That's just not a viable option anymore to do that because if you, so for example, ConvertKit, a lot of people are big, you know, ConvertKit affiliates and they trashed their affiliate marketing to like totally make it like a non-factor. Mm -hmm. Then all of the affiliate marketers freaked out and they've changed it back or partially changed it back. But that's the other thing that can happen at any time. So mm -hmm. it, it it's a really, it is a turnoff. I think people hate all that stuff. <laughs> so, Or they ignore it. I mean, I, there's times it. when I go to a, a blog and I'm just skipping down, skipping down, I'm skipping all the ads. I'm, I see it, but I'm like, yeah, I see you because I, I've already gone to your website and I got the pic, you know, the pixel and now you're following me with my cookies and whatnot. But and that's okay. You can be there, but I'm not going to look at it. I'm not, I'm not paying any attention to it. I, you know, it, we weed it out. We're just like, I don't see you. <laughs> yeah. I, I, yeah. I don't know. I don't know what the future is for ad tech, uh, but they will find a way to push ads on us. I'm sure it's kind of like we were talking before the show about how Instagram is going to start 23% of all Instagram content is going to be suggested. I, th I think that's where it's probably going to go. You're going to be served yeah. up ads all the time. They're just not going to be called yeah. ads. You know, People it's going to be stop more. Using it at that yeah. point, it's just going to be yeah. more. Oh, and that's by 2024. Is that right? That it was, or 2023? That like a quarter of all Instagram posts are going to be suggested. And so what that means then is like everybody's going to be, I guess, a Kardashian and selling their wares on Instagram. But... Actually, the Kardashians came out against it. Oh, I'm sure they did. Yeah, <laughs> even though they're like the biggest you know, yeah, influencers exactly, out they're there. They're going to get hurt by it. I'm sure they're going to get hurt by it. So anyway, that's all changing. It's all evolving. I wish so I we're going to give you some alternatives, uh, alternative methods other than oh, are we shifting just, now? 
Yeah. Other than just putting ads all over your blog, we're going to give you some alternatives <laughs> to be seen and to start your way towards making money for your business. We're shifting into yeah. presentations and training. Yeah, presentation mode. <laughs> <laughs> So how do collaborations help you expand your audience? Shelley? Well, uh, <laughs> when Jen and I collaborate on this <laughs> podcast, for instance, her audience sees me. They might come and look at my things. My audience comes and sees her and they might go get on her newsletter email list and, and check her out on LinkedIn. So that is how we grow our audience one new audience at a time. Um, and you can do it that way, or you can do bigger things. But so we're starting off with beginners uh, at a beginner level and just talking about the easy things to do and then working our way up towards more complicated things. Yeah. You know, and it's interesting. I don't know if I've ever told you this, Shelly, but when we first joined forces, I shared with a colleague that you and I were doing this and, and they were, the first thing was like, well, what are you getting out of it? And I'm like, what do you mean? You know, and, and kind of like, almost like, like, I don't know if it was that like, like one of us was supposed to pay the other or something. I'm like, I'm getting out of it that my show comes back and mm -hmm. I get to talk to somebody interesting and we learn from each other. Like it can be. And it gives you accountability that. to show up every week. Exactly. Right? Yeah. yeah. You know, and so the first thing is, so just, you know, so Shelly and I, we have separate businesses. And we signed an agreement before we started doing this. So when we talk about collaborations and stuff, we're still saying you need to be careful. Like we're not saying go into things willy nilly, but they can also be a heck of a lot of fun. Like yeah. we have a lot of fun. We're yeah, enjoying sure. getting to know each other. This collaboration is working for us because we're teaching each other things all the time. So bear in mind, we are both believers in collaborations. Um, and it can really benefit you and your audience. So yeah, that's the first thing. Like each other's audience, they get they get notified. That's right. Yeah, collaboration is basically using other people's audiences. And in return, you're bringing along your audience to increase theirs. So it's, it's a win-win situation. Exactly. And there are so many ways you can do it. So like on this one, we have kind of a, I guess, an informal partnership. We signed something, but it's also that we can leave at any time. So that's why it's pretty informal. And we gave each other vague roles for what we're supposed to do. And we check in on that. That's why I was talking earlier about how we went through my checklist because I was like, oh, yeah. I hadn't been doing some of this stuff. So we do check-ins check and things like that. So collaborations work really well. We have met interesting people, talked to new people through this. That's one way of doing it. There are other methods of collaboration, for example, cross promotion. So when before Shelly was on the show, I had a cross promotion with another podcaster. We each made a little ad about our show and we ran ads on each other's shows to try and get more listeners. It was one way for us to boost each other. And that's one example of another type of cross promotion. Excuse me, cross promotion. Yeah. Yeah, and you can and you can do it with um, other like for instance, we uh, do production for our clients, and we have clients who would work with us. They uh, would would tell their friends and and colleagues about the show that they were doing. Look, I'm doing this live stream every week. I hope you'll check it out. And they'll go, Oh, that's really great. How did you make that happen? And then we get that referral. We get that. Prom, you know, cross promotion type of a referral from our client. He says, well, I'm using AGK Media Studio and they handle everything and they're great. Mm -hmm. So go visit them and, and check them out and, you know, work with them. Uh, so referrals is a, is one way of, you know, getting started with that. Exactly. And that's, I guess, another form of collaboration. I go out, I speak to a lot of groups and I, do my best to do a great job. And then I can't tell you how many clients I've had that come to me as a result of speaking. And it's not the people necessarily, I mean, one of my best clients came not from them seeing me directly. Somebody else saw me and said, oh, you should talk to Jen. I saw her speak at SBDC. So 
the small business development center. And then, I mean, it was like, I don't know, a yeah, year later, like you appeared in front of came. somebody else's audience. And yeah. from that, you got a referral. Exactly. So you open so, up those opportunities when you do that. Absolutely. And like a lot of people are like, well, that's a no go because I don't get to sell from the stage. Like it's, mm -hmm. it's teaching is mm -hmm. what I do. And I've never turned that down because I'm really passionate about helping other people, A. And B, I don't have to sell from the stage, so to speak, to like right. sell. Like right. part of what makes it being sales is that you say things throughout, like when I've helped people, this is a result that I've gotten as a result of this specific tactic. Or you talk about things and you share your expertise and by providing value to others, this is my primary marketing tool. I provide value to others. People come to me. The, the end. Like, it's really that simple. Like, and I've become this person over time. This didn't happen immediately that people trust as someone that they can come to when they have marketing questions. And then guess what? People want more. So they become clients. And so that's one way of doing it too. So uh, don't turn down the speaking engagements just because you can't sell from the stage. You are your product. And I think a lot of people forget that you're your product. So I mean, as long as you're going to be in that area anyway, I wouldn't spend a whole lot of money to get to, to a conference that you didn't even care about just to speak for free. <laughs> no, no. But like, you don't have to, you know, you get what I mean. Like, yeah. you know, this opportunity came to me. I've built a relationship with them. I have some collaborations and some agreements that have been in place for years because I just keep showing up. I just keep doing my thing. I just keep showing up. Yeah. And I get a lot of interest and a lot of clients from that. Yeah. So, and if you can get on on other people's masterminds or membership groups as a speaker, anything that's uh, virtual, that that's yeah. ideal. I've done and then that. You don't I've, have to get paid because you know you're not having to travel or spend exactly. any money on it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, exactly. So I have I I have spoken on summits. Those are great. A lot of especially summits where they keep the content up for a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, I've also sponsored summits. Sometimes summits have really low levels of sponsorship and mm -hmm. it's, it's accessible, you know, to just get your brand out there as something. Nice. Uh, yeah. We, I will travel to speak. So for example, oh, and I can announce this now. I'm speaking at She Podcast Live <laughs> in 2022. And I'm very excited to travel to Washington, D.C. in October to go speak at that event. And then part of how that works is, they promote me and I promote their conference and that's how it works. And then in that case, I do get to share and collect email addresses from the stage. So that's an example of like, here's a big conference. I'm a podcaster. I do marketing. Let's talk. And I get to, to present at that group. I get to meet people. And then I also get to say, hey, if you want more information, and I haven't decided what the opt-in is going to be, but there will be something, That's right, you know, you but, time. you know, but there's like, they sent over already, like the cross promotional thing. And what I will say is, you know, and I'll say that one of the reasons I stopped having guests on the show is the guests weren't doing their part of the cross promotion. Mm -hmm. It's not a one way street. You know, you don't get to be on the summit and then not tell anyone about the summit. Yeah. You don't get to be a guest on a podcast and never tell anybody that you were a guest on a podcast. This is a, a two-way venture, um, right. and you have to look at it as a collaboration and be really excited about it, and you have to, so do things that you're going to be all in. Mm -hmm. And, and um, next week, I'm going to be teaching on how to be a great podcast guest, and that includes how to do your outreach, how to meet up with people who would be a good fit for you, but it also teaches you some of the things that are in your responsibility uh, to handle, such as sharing cross-promoting, uh, following the show, on uh, following the person on LinkedIn and following their, you know, that relationship. Yeah. You're responsible for building some kind of relationship with that person. And Absolutely. the easy, you know, the easier you as a host make that for your guests, then the more you're going to grow your network. So it's, it, that's also a two, two way street. Absolutely. It's, yeah. it is a two-way street. It's, it's being interested, you know, and I think that that's part of the collaborative thing. I think a lot of people 
I won't say a lot of people. I think that that's an overgeneralization. I think there are many people who look at it as what's in it for me. Mm -hmm, And what we're really talking about is what's in it for us. What's in it for us? How can we make this work? How can we make it better? I can tell you that one of the reasons I'm back at She Podcasts is I did my part. I did my part. I like promoted the heck out of it. I participated fully in the conference. I asked questions. You're more likely to get invited back. I mean, it's just the way that it works, you know, when, when you do your part. So it's the same thing when you do podcast interviews, we're not going to, like, like Shelly said, I can't wait to listen to it. So, uh, by the way, (laughs) I won't be on the show next week, maybe. (laughs) <laughs> so I can't wait to listen because to it. Because she's doing this teaching thing that she's talking about. I'm doing this teaching about. thing that I'm talking about. <laughs> and right. I don't have any control over what days of the week that happens. That's outside of my uh, span of control. Uh, but if you are in the Small Business Development Center's uh, e-commerce class, <laughs> I will be your speaker next week at this time. And we'll be talking about how to develop e-commerce. So, ah, so that'll be a future topic on this show. On this? <laughs> <laughs> Might be. Yeah. And uh, so I'm very excited about that. So we won't talk too much about podcast interviews. The next topic, but it is important. I will say it is important to do your part in the podcasting thing. The one side is that, yes, the podcaster needs to send out graphics and, you know, suggested tweets and that kind of stuff. It really helps. Mm -hmm. Um, But then you have to do your part too. (laughs) Like it's not my job as a podcaster to just promote the heck out of you and put you on my website and put you out on all the networks if you're not going to also promote me and talk about this great interview that you had. So that's going to be, that's me as podcasters, look at our analytics. And if we see, (laughs) uh, look at the big jump of downloads I had when this person was on, (laughs) she promoted herself. She promoted that podcast and I want to have her back. People often say I'm one of their more popular episodes. And it's because I always am like, I was on the show. It's very exciting, you know, and you do it more Um, than once. I do it more than once. Look, look, look. (laughs) <laughs> uh, uh, for three or four weeks after it happens, you're still talking yeah. about it. And, and that's important. Heck, if it's evergreen, I do it forever. So, yeah. um, so I, so we'll talk, well, we, that's a royal we, isn't it? Shelly will talk about that next week. That's right. In greater depth. Uh, I would love for you to talk about this next point because I have never, well, no, I've never done it. Yeah. Book compilation. So um, this is not difficult. It is an exercise in organization though. So as long as you're a person who knows how to be organized and follow through, this is not difficult. So what we did was we were going to a conference. Uh, Toby and I went to women. uh, She podcast podcast. last year. Uh, And we interviewed 18 different women who were there attending and Jen was one of them. And see what it can turn into. It's amazing. Um, But we did interviews with all of these women. And then we transcribed it, turned it into a book and put it out there. This is a compilation book. So then we shared it with all the people who were in the book so that they could share the book with their friends and family and say, look, I'm in this book. And uh, then, you know, it grows as, as, as a compilation, a collaboration and a collaborative effort. And then you can continue to do it. If I was going to go again this year, which I'm not because I have too much other family issues going on in my life right now. <laughs> well, uh, if I was going again this away. year, we could do the same thing. Yeah. And we could bring last year's book and say, don't you want to be in this year's book? You know, and it, and it, yeah. and it kind of perpetuates yeah. itself. It's but a lot so of far fun. away. I mean, we're going to DC because John's yeah. family lives there. So we're turning yeah. it into like a family vacation and stuff. Yeah. But- and we could have done that too, because Toby's got his daughter in the area. But um, yeah, it was just too many things too going much. on this year with medical yeah. issues and stuff. Yeah. But I remember, I mean, when the book came out and everything, like I was like super stoked and I yeah. shared it and, you know, and, and it's I still be... available on Amazon. If you're interested, it's called Women in Podcasting, <laughs> the Messages and Methods Interviews. Go look it up. And in the book, we not only do the interviews, share the interviews, we also talk about how we created the book. We give you the whole process in, in yeah. that book. So, yeah. And I can tell you, you do have to do this with intentionality because at one point I wanted to go back to all of the podcast episodes that I had done and put together kind of a compilation of, of a lot of the different things that I had talked about. I had some themes. Mm-hmm. This was before Shelly. 
what do you yes. call that? I would call it BS, but that sounds bad. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, before your life changed for the better, before my life changed, <laughs> transformed. So, but I went, tried to go back and put those things together because I ran all these series. There's a series on project management, there's some series on leadership. It's really hard to do if you don't do that with intentionality. That's right. You got to come up with a theme and you want to ask very similar questions so that you can expand on those ideas within your book. Now, we were going to do it again on digital marketing, but then we kind of ran into um, everybody kind of had the same answers for everything. So <laughs> there wasn't enough variety. So we kind of just like, yeah, we're not going to do that anymore. <laughs> I wondered what happened to that. I know, right? You know, everybody kind of um, had the same answers and we're like, that's not yeah, enough information. Not enough. You know, and, and the, the episodes that I was going to make into a compilation were actually solo shows. And I thought, well, mm -hmm. I know what I said. I can do mm -hmm. that. But it's getting back to then having like the structure of a presentation. Exactly. And that's what we did with Livecast Live. Oh. We did we did the shows, then we transcribed the shows, then I edited them into book chapters and we put out Livecast Live. So that's another way to go about it. But if you're doing this as a collaboration so that other people will promote your work, you'll you'll bring those people on for those interviews and put them in your book as well. Yeah. 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 Book Next. compilation. Next, we have <laughs> summits, conferences, and speaking. So I've done all three to different levels of success. So I was in Missing Letter when they first launched. They had a summit. I was in the Missing Letter Summit the first nice. year. It was neat. It was good. Um, and I had technical trouble because it was all oh. virtual. And so it was almost like a missed opportunity because I had it was really early on in my business. And then I had there was an issue with like a technical issue with like zoom. And I think I was still using PowerPoint cause I was still crawling out of my, uh, corporate shell. <laughs> so I was still really using that and there was, yeah, so it didn't really work. Um, and that's kind of the thing about summits and things that are virtual is, you know, things can happen and, um, that can make it a lot, a lot more difficult. However, summits are also great because you get visibility if it's done well, like the, the missing letter summit was done well. It wasn't their fault that there were technical issues. I, I was up there on their website for a long time for this summit. Nice. I was, you know, one of the one of the people who was promoted. I promoted it. I had a lot of people on there. They were all my buds, budskies. So like they were getting into the missing letter environment. It's a tool that I still use and like. So, you know, it all worked out. Um, but not all summits are like that. So you want to make sure that you get hooked into summits where you're on the same page as everybody. The purpose of it is very aligned with your purpose. Because remember, you're going to be in a summit and it's like all these names. So you want to make sure that, you know, it's not you're not just doing it to do it. Like you need to make sure that you're looking at it from the perspective of a business decision. And if it is aligned with your higher purpose and if if you want to have your name alongside some of the folks that are also on the summit yeah and that the topic fits what you talk about what is your business is it does it fit into that topic and in what way and often yeah. uh summits can also be like a giveaway where they ask you to give uh, some of your, you know, maybe give away a free course or a free book or uh, time one-on-one -on -one coaching time or something like that. They might mm -hmm. add that in as an incentive for people to up, up a level to the VIP level. So people could come in and watch it for free, or if they want to up level to the VIP, then, then they might get these extra things from the speakers. So you yeah. have to have something ready to go for that if, if, if you want to start applying for those types of things. Absolutely. And so the only exception I have to it being totally about your topic is if you like I have a client right now who teaches meditation. I have been on more than one summit where somebody comes in and like leads everybody into meditation to get their reset. Now, the whole conference isn't about meditation. Mm -hmm. It can be about marketing. It can be about business. You know, I love these types of situations where somebody has a specific skill and they're like leading everybody in like a mindset exercise or in a mm -hmm. meditation or in something to kind of get everybody like in the flow of what's going to happen. So mm -hmm. the whole summit, so don't turn things down, 
but sometimes you have to be kind of creative and figure out if that thing that you offer that's very specialized, how that fits in um, and if you can make it work. And if you can, then then go for it. So it it's tricky sometimes and you have to sometimes be very flexible about it, but but also don't be afraid to say no. Yeah. Or, or just use your imagination and creativity and say, uh, well, I can't do that, but can I do this for you? You know, and yeah, you know, I heard about, I was at a conference and they did this and I want to do that. So how about if I do this for you? You know, I've seen people come on as DJs and during transition times on, on things like that. So they're, you know, just try to think outside the box a little bit if you want to be involved in something like that. Absolutely. I've, yeah, I've been in all kinds of things where they have DJs, they have people coming on stage and dancing. I mean, mm -hmm. there's so many, it's so dynamic now that if you want to get in with some people and you see a lot of people that you want to get to know better and it fits, then, then find a way to make it work. Yeah. That's yeah. really what, what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. So conferences, uh, you have to, so for conferences, um, the difference is, so this year for She Podcast, I didn't have to apply. They asked me back. Nice. Um, but the first time I did it, I did apply. So you have to go out there and you have to put yourself out there and kind of learn how to pitch, you know, learn how to pitch conferences, learn how to pitch speaking engagements. Um, it's a good way to get some PR. It's usually places where you can get your website. And then if you're speaking, you know, it's a good way to kind of workshop through ideas, um, get the word out um, and share important information of value to um, your potential customers. Nice while also offering value to the people running the conference or providing yeah. the speaking engagement. Yeah. You definitely want to focus on the audience. Who's going to be at the conference? What are they looking for? What do they need? And how can you fulfill their needs? And then that is what you're going to focus on when you talk to the organizers. Yeah, it's really interesting. So we had uh, our panel last year for She Podcasts, we also had an app for the conference and I was like super active in that app. I was asking questions about, you know, I was asking people like, how do you market your podcast? What tools do you use? I was taking advantage of everything that they had to offer. And then we had like a hundred people sign up to go. It was like, there were a lot of people there, you know, and I think it was that, and it wasn't just me, like there was a panel of like five people and everybody, you know, started adding questions to it because it was just a good way to get people engaged and to get people in. So yeah. I think it was, I think it was a really good opportunity. And I think that it's an opportunity that to show some collaboration, like you're collaborating, mm -hmm. not just and when it comes to a conference and to speaking, you're collaborating, not only with the organizers of the event, you're collaborating with the people who are attending. Yes. Yes. And if it's possible to reach out to them even before you attend, that's all, that's so much better because then you can yeah. develop a little bit of a relationship before you even meet in person. And then you, you use, you use your time at the conference so much more efficiently when you can do it that way. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, do you want to get into joint ventures at all? Have, do you want to talk at all about summits and stuff or? No, I think we've done that. Okay. Okay. I'm good with it. Uh, so joint ventures, affiliates, influencers. So this is more pay to play stuff. So this is like, I have a big audience. You have a big audience. Let's come up with an agreement. Um, with these, it, it works great. You just have to be careful with things like I'm going to share my email list and, you know, cause that goes against the terms of service. Like if I sign up for your email list, Shelly, I don't want you to go sell it to like your right. joint venture partner. Right. Uh, so you want to be really careful about that, but you can do cross promotions inside of your newsletter. Like, I guess I've done that because I'm going to, and I'll start doing it this week when I start talking about speaking issue podcasts, like I'll have a link if people want to sign up for that, but they're not paying me for that. That's a little different than right. a joint venture partnership um, and affiliate links where like I get paid if somebody you know, buys convert kit or whatever. So, yeah. um, so those you want to be extremely careful with because you're but really what getting... I've seen people do is they'll send out an email to their list and they'll say, uh, something really good about, you know, the, the thing, uh, the person or yeah. their product, and then say, this is coming up. And then at the bottom, it says, if you do not want to receive any more emails about this topic, opt out here. So right. then they give you that option to, I don't, I don't have any interest in that. And then you can just, you know, and then you will be taken off of that segmented list and 
you won't exactly. have to worry about it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I would just be really careful before doing some of that. Um, I've ha I have a whole newsletter about influencer marketing where you just have to make sure everybody's in, everybody has to mm -hmm. be all in on influencer marketing. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, just be really careful when you start getting financially into bed with people, um, that they're legit and that it's going to be good for your brand. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's a really big part of cross promotion and collaborations is you really want that synergy and you also want that, that you are in, like, I'm a purpose driven organization, not a lot of marketing <laughs> agencies and consultants are. So I'm really mm -hmm. cautious before I do any of that stuff. Yeah, I have, I, I have a long time before I'm willing to do that. Um, if that's you, you're going to want to do the same thing. A lot of people just jump right in. And I don't, um, and I don't really recommend everybody just jumps in unless you're sure. Yeah. If it's, if this person is a friend of yours and you've done business with them and you feel that they are very reputable, sure. But if you haven't and you don't know, don't just do it for the money. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I feel pretty good about this training. We didn't get any questions, but I feel like we provided a lot of good information. Yeah. That's right. That's right. So if you uh, <laughs> would like to learn more about doing live streaming and starting your own channel so that you have something to collaborate with and on, then uh, go check out the framework that I have created, the consist content consistency framework and schedule. You can find that at framework.agkmedia.studio. Which is awesome. Yeah. Go do that. I'm going to put And that I am continuing my Epiphany Courses special offer for podcast listeners. If you go to epiphanycourses.com slash podcast, that will take you to a special offer page uh, for 15% off a monthly or annual subscription. Epiphany Courses is very similar to how these lessons work, except uh, we have special times where it's just you and me. I'm answering questions with you. So if you like this style, if you like uh, the openness of learning in this way, um, then please consider, please go over to Epiphany Courses. There's 20 courses over there um, and consider signing up, being one of the first people to be there. We've got, we've already signed up a few people. We're going to, we're continuing to work on signing up even more. Yay. Fun. Why don't we skip tweaks of the week Okie dokie. and go straight to the inspirational nugget since we're running right. out of time? And here I thought it was be a short show today. Oh, we have so much to say. <laughs> this is from Marcus Aurelius Meditations again. Indeed, if you find anything in human life better than justice, truth, self-control, courage, in short, anything better than the sufficiency of your own mind, which keeps you acting according to the demands of true reason and accepting what fate gives you outside of your own power of choice, I tell you, if you can see anything better than this, turn to it, heart and soul, and take full advantage of this greater good that you've found. So basically he's saying, you know what, money is great, but chasing money can create problems. Climbing one mountain, you see the next mountain that you have to climb. Uh, there's never enough. There's never enough unless you cling to virtue. And virtue is the one good that reveals itself to be more than we expect. Virtue, which is made up of justice, honesty, discipline, and courage, is the only thing worth striving for. Certainly nothing will improve your life path more than virtuous choices. Doing your best work will always bring more satisfaction and better results than doing the bare minimum or shirking responsibility or just doing it for the money. What do you wow, think, that really Jen? ties into what we talked about today. Yeah. Yeah. So Toby and I have been talking a lot about choices this right now. This, this week, uh, what choices he's made in his life and where it's brought him to and other people in our lives, what choices they've made and where they're at in their lives. And we can kind of compare and say, you know, why did you choose to go this way? What made you think that that was the right answer? And it's usually about, you know, doing the right thing for yourself and your family so that in the future, you know, it'll be better, uh, you know, making the hard choice now so that it will pay off later rather than immediate gratification of, I don't like college, I'm quitting. And maybe if you stuck it out, maybe, you know, life would have been a little different. So 
Think about those virtues as you're making those life decisions, if you want your life path to go uh, into a brighter future. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. What I like about what you said is that doing your best work will always bring more satisfaction than doing the bare minimum or shirking responsibility. I sometimes overwhelm myself because I do too much of my best thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Like sometimes I need to kind of, it doesn't have to be 150%, maybe, maybe a hundred percent would be fine. And, but I always feel like you get out of something what you put into it. Yes. And I feel like the best things have come to me at the times when I've put the most effort into something. And you were talking about, you know, when people get into a collaboration and they're looking at what's in it for me. Uh, th then they say no, because I'm not making enough money or it's not going to give me enough feed, you know, enough ROI or whatever. Well, what did you miss out on? You know, what are you going to miss out on? Are you going to miss out on making a, a lifelong friend? Are you going to miss out on the possibility that you spoke for free to this group? And then one of those people told somebody else who turned out to be your best client, you know, so maybe don't look at so much the short term, what's in it for me? And think mm -hmm. about, you know, how am I helping the world? Absolutely. I, you know, I, I think often about a meeting I was in and the person who brought me into the meeting, we get to the end and I was like, oh, this sounds really great, you know, but I'm a teacher and it was, it was a consulting gig and the person like shut their computer and said, I'm not going to get anything out of this and like walked out like this was like a professional meeting, you know, and I was like, I just kind of sat there and I looked at my um, this person I didn't know who's now a trusted colleague of mine. And we just kind of were like, oh, and we stayed, you know, and here we are four years later, still working in that partnership. And I can't even share with you how much I've gotten out of it. Mm -hmm. You know, was it something that was going to pay, you know, $20,000 that moment? No. Have I gotten, have I learned a lot about myself, about partnerships, about marketing, about small businesses? Absolutely. Like it has, it's the gift that has given me so much. And if I had just said no, I can't, I, you know, I don't know where yeah. I would be if I had yeah. just said no. It's just shutting that door to a whole, yeah. whole new world that you could have walked into. <laughs> and, you know, and, and my friend, I mean, she's gone on to do great things, mm -hmm. different things. Mm -hmm. And, and that's wonderful. That there's nothing wrong with that. But it is about what it is that that it's not always about the short term gain. Yeah, for me. Yeah. Virtuous choices. That's right. Keep that in mind this week as you're uh, making choices in your life and day to day. And and see, see what it does for you. Have a good week, everybody. <laughs> Thank you for joining the Women Conquer Business podcast, hosted by Shelley Carney and Jen McFarland. Please subscribe and leave a comment or question regarding your most challenging content creation or business problem. Then share this podcast with family and friends so they can find the support they need to expand their brand and share their message with the world. Check the show notes for links to valuable resources and come back again next week.